Hello, I'm David Kerr and you are watching Shalom World News. Here's your latest news headlines from around the globe. The US Supreme Court has ruled against the state of New York's imposition of strict attendance limits upon Catholic churches and other places of worship. The restrictions were imposed by the state's governor, Andrew Cuomo, in early October in a bid to, he said, fight the COVID-19 pandemic. That decision quickly faced legal challenge, though, from both Jewish groups and the Catholic Diocese of Brooklyn. Now the Supreme Court has ruled 5-4 in their favour. The five justices who sided with the religious groups were Justices Amy Coney Barrett, Samuel Alito, Clarence Thomas, Brett Kavanaugh and Neil Gorsuch. Explaining their decision, they said that the New York restrictions, quote, strike at the very heart of the First Amendment's guarantee to religious liberty. Adding that even in a pandemic, the Constitution cannot be put away and forgotten. Meanwhile, Justice Neil Gorsuch also suggested that Governor Cuomo was being inconsistent in imposing strict capacity restrictions on places of worship, while not applying the same public health rationale to a range of businesses, including hardware stores, acupuncturists, liquor stores and bicycle repair shops. Meanwhile, the Catholic Church in England is welcoming the decision by their government to allow collective worship to resume in churches when the present national lockdown expires on December the 2nd. The General Secretary of the Bishops' Conference of England and Wales, Canon Christopher Thomas, said the decision acknowledges the active collaboration that has occurred between church and state in developing COVID-secure protocols for churches. Collective worship in England has been suppressed since November the 5th following the reintroduction of a national lockdown aimed at combating the COVID-19 pandemic. Canon Thomas added that it was now incumbent on all those who attend Holy Mass and other liturgical gatherings to follow the church's COVID-19 guidelines. The Blessed Sacrament has been stolen from a church on the Italian island of Sicily. The sacrilegious theft took place on the night of November the 23rd at the parish of the Holy Sepulchre in the town of Bagheria. The doors of the church's tabernacle were prized open, with the consecrated hosts then being removed. Some of them were later found on the floor of the church. The parish priest, Father Filippo Custos, said the parish felt great sadness to, quote, see the Eucharistic body of the Lord Jesus treated in this deplorable way. He has now instituted several days of prayer and reparation. An English midwifery student who faced suspension from her studies due to being involved in a student pro-life group has now won an apology and a payout from her university. Last year, 25-year-old Julia Rinkovich was blocked by the University of Nottingham from entering her programme's hospital placement phase after the university learned of her leadership of the Student Pro-Life Society. She then faced a four-month-long fitness-to-practice investigation. The case was dismissed by the university in January, but Ms Rinkovich decided she deserved an apology, which she's now got, along with a financial payout. Commenting upon the decision, Ms Rinkovich said that she hoped that her victory means that no future students will have to experience what she has had to endure. An English archaeologist is claiming to have found the childhood home of Jesus Christ in Nazareth. Professor Ken Dark of the University of Reading states his case in a new book in which he claims to pinpoint the location of the Holy Family's house in Nazareth. He says the historic site is below a convent belonging to the Sisters of Nazareth adjacent to the present-day Basilica of the Annunciation. Archaeological digs on the site have revealed a two-storey house dating from the first century which is built into a natural cave. The craftsmanship of its architecture, says Professor Dark, suggests it was built by a stonemason, a builder or a carpenter such as St Joseph. His research also highlights the remains of a large 4th century church built adjacent to the archaeological site. Professor Dark suggests that the size of that church could reflect the great importance attached to the house of Jesus in centuries gone by. Professor Dark's new book, entitled The Sisters of Nazareth Convent, a Roman period, Byzantine and Crusader site in central Nazareth, is the culmination of 14 years of research and excavation. The Catholic Church is the work of the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus sent to gather us together. That was the message of Pope Francis during his weekly audience at the Vatican this Wednesday. Reflecting upon the life of the early church, the Holy Father noted that it was an active church that was on the move, and yet prayer was, quote, its basis and impulse for missionary action. He also suggested that the present-day church continues, quote, to be guided by the Holy Spirit in this communion through prayer, such that the church can be accurately described as, quote, the work of the Spirit in the Christian community, in the life of the community, in the Eucharist, and in prayer. 
Meanwhile, Pope Francis has approved a decree recognising the martyrdom of 127 Catholics who were killed during the Spanish Civil War, thus paving the way for them to be declared blessed. The decision was announced by the Vatican on November the 23rd. The Spanish martyrs include Father Juan Elia Medina, who was a priest of the Southern Diocese of Cordoba, along with 126 of his companions, including fellow priests, religious and lay people. It is estimated that more than 6,800 clergy and religious alone were killed for their faith by Republican forces during the Spanish Civil War, which raged for three years between 1936 and 1939. So far, over 1,900 of those martyrs have been beatified, of whom 11 have also been canonised. Pope Francis also authorised a decree recognising a miracle attributed to the intercession of Father Mario Cicera, a priest of the Archdiocese of Milan who died in 1945. Father Cicera was known for his compassion for the poor, the sick and former prisoners. He also cared for young soldiers during the Second World War. He too will now be declared blessed. Well, that's all for now. Do join me next time for some more news stories from across the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.